today, as I'm working on uh, another album, <clears throat> I start to think about um, what gives it worth and what gives any music worth. So, um, and does it matter? Uh, and to me, as a creator of music and noise and sounds, um, I'd like to think that I can make it as um, worthy as I can um, and to have some worth. Uh, it's very easy to go on about the quality of something, um, but I think whether something's worthy has a worthiness. I think that's slightly different. And I guess what we would have to do is agree on what worthy and worthiness means. And I have actually looked up the definition, and um, in several dictionaries, actually they're 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 slightly different. But the one I think I think that I'm considering uh, the meaning for worthiness is to ha having adequate or great merit, character or value, um, a commendable excellence or merit deserving, a person of eminent worth, merit or position. Well, I think the first one kind of hits where I'm, what I'm saying, which is having adequate or great merit, character or value. And I don't mean me, I mean my music. So um, that's 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 something that I've always tried to put in to my music, um, and I think it depends on what it is that you're trying to do. So the music business needs to create and constantly recreate music that will sell to the masses at any given time, whoever they are and therefore it's structured around things that are pleasing, things that sit next to other things on radio stations. Uh, um, I've used the term quite harshly, lowest common denominator, um, and I th but I think it does edge towards there. I think some, uh, some music does edge towards the lowest common denominator, very simple, um, some sort of earworm element of them. Um, that's not bad, but I think as we've seen recently over a number of years, the quality of music and the diversity, how strange is that, of music itself um, is nowhere. It's almost like someone's taken over all the radio stations and said this is what sells easily, this is a no-brainer, um, let's just produce everything that's like this, let's concentrate on this sort of music. And I think that's where the commercial aspect of the sort of high-profile music falls down at the moment. I think we've seen in history um, a a breaking down of the old guard of old music to, to invigorate. The most obvious one would be in the mid-70s, 1975 onwards, for a few years only, um, punk, which was an absolute anti-establishment, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna accept this, we're not gonna have this anymore. The fact that it that it strangely gained pace and became commercial or a later aspect of that became sellable uh, it is always an interest, um, an interesting aspect to me. Um, something that grates and shouldn't be commercial, but it's about making you wake up or making the originator of that music then making a statement saying this is all crap, I don't like it. The fact that that suddenly becomes Sellable makes money itself, which is not what it was for, is a really interesting uh, footnote. And of course, the musical um, spin-off from that commercial side of punk 
would have been all the to generate all the newer bands that were doing newer things it became acceptable and it became um, uh, well acceptable for the music business to actually buy into aspects of it and the newer aspects of the music that went from the 70s on onwards through to the 80s and we had a, a lot of really interesting and good music from the 70s and the 80s into into the 90s and then it started to wane then it was same old same old and it's become very sugar coated and supposedly hard and um, hardcore but really not no one's doing or saying anything different so worthiness um, I think that thinking about what you do as a as a music creator and trying to apply some real genuine aspect or as much as you can to your own music and creating music I think is um, is is one of the keys to reviving original sounds and original songs and thinking about music differently um, I can think of many bands that I, I've just loved over the years because they've done something that's slightly different but actually still commercial and you can st you can still have it I, I don't I don't think I have that um, that really push and that drive to create commercial music um, I, I, I I'm just creating the music that I don't hear that, that I like um, so I think for, for me it's different but there have been many bands that have just they've just struck gold with something that sounds new for the time and is instantly accessible and, and commercial and would sell that's brilliant um, I'd love to have one of those on my um, on my roster on my list but um, that that's not happened uh, but but um, I, I think what I think what it does that, that the you can tell the worth of something um, by it just got a little bit extra someone's worked hard and it and more often than not it is the artist it's the writer and the performer that kind of pulls all those elements together um, yes you do and can get it from um, a singer or a musician who goes into a studio with a producer and an engineer and they're top-notch and they do a fantastic job and and at the end of the day they'll produce something that is just so much better than the artist could have done on their own um, my, my my thing has always been create something from one room in a house in complete isolation that sounds like it might be a band that has that breathes that has that has life um, and and I I've always loved that idea and so that's what I do it's also about <laughs> having complete control I, f I f fully admit that <clears throat> um, but um, with my limited skills doing the most I can do with my limited skills and my and my um, uh, my creativity so that's what that's about. Um, now the worthiness thing came about. I started to think about it because I uh, I'd realised that um, I, I didn't listen to radio really. Uh, I didn't listen to mainstream radio, and um, by accident, radio one was put on in the morning, and I was appalled. I was appalled by by the talk by the content of the talk not even getting to the music the um, the shallowness the childishness the you used to call it playfulness keep it light you know it's, especially in these times of covid and and all the stuff that's going to the wall at the moment I, I of course but radio has always been like that radio has always been about the light um, particularly BBC radio um, it, it pretends to give you news but of course it doesn't it gives you little snapshots of nothing um, doesn't give you any detail <clears throat> on radio 
So I, I thought that actually I had to, I had a 25 minute trip up the road in the car and I thought, right, when I go out in the car, I'm going to put Radio 1 on and play it, f just, just listen to it, see what goes on in the morning um, for that 25 minutes. I, I couldn't tell you who was on, not bothered about who was on, but the, the talk was just trivial, um, boring, um, acted, not genuine. Uh, there's nothing worse than when you listen to a DJ, because that's what they're being right from the old days, that dated a DJ trying to be a DJ. And then we get to the music. The, the shallowness of the music, um, there's just nothing there. It's simple, it's made by computer, um, it's, it's tr it sells itself as being grandiose, but it's not. Um, it's just dead, limp, lifeless, and that was a real worry. Someone needs to, the younger now generation, and there are plenty of them that, who, who are not happy with what's on the radio, um, they now need to start creating Sorry about that. That was very strange, wasn't it? Did you notice the slight movement in reality there? Um, yes, yeah, so worthiness um, and the BBC uh, and music. There's been a lot written recently uh, and I guess recently is over the last five years um, looking at the and even before that the decline of listeners to the BBC particularly Radio 1 station and uh, I, th I think it, what it does is it shows it shows a def definite downward um, trend and uh, the BBC and other people would who are very pro BBC would would counter this by saying, "Well, what do you expect um, with Spotify and free streaming? You can get your music anywhere, and um, people people don't need to listen to live music anymore." Um, but that's the point. The point is that that the BBC. Uh, Radio 1, Radio 2, they have their set playlists, yes, but they have things happening live at the time. Um, that is the, peculiar, the, 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 the peculiarity of it, that is the, um, that's the thing it's selling. Uh, you can't get that. You, you, can't, you can't get that anywhere else. So, uh, it should be very popular, the fact that you can contact um, the people there, make a comment, requests, um, phone in, speak to, enter competitions, win prizes, win tickets, make a comment, send in videos, send in tweets, all this stuff this is where the new technology is, and, and you can do that with the BBC. And I think that um, to turn around and say, well, there's, there's, there's no surprise that people buy music or they listen to music in a very different way, so no wonder, no wonder we're taking a slide. No, I don't believe it's that. Uh, I think the eye's off the ball. I think what I think the slide is indicating that something needs to change, something drastically, that there is a, that we need to kill off music and reinvent it in some way there needs to be some innovation in music 
or some hankering for a style that is no longer heard. A passion for making music for the sake of making music rather than for the sake of being famous, the sake of being a narcissist. Um, there has to be a deeper meaning to it initially. It can be trivial later on once it's gained its ground but it needs to have a real worthiness and so here's how we, we, we come back to this word worthy and its meaning and what it means to produce something that is of worth now of course something that I might think is worthy isn't necessarily worthy to anyone else I fully appreciate that but if it's you doing the creating and you, and you know that you can sucker people into just listening to something because it's because it's been done before and you're riding on the coattails or you're surfing off the the, uh, the the waves of those who are very much successful in a particular style I, th I think there's um, there's possibly a laziness there it's almost like you you're enacting something without feeling it um, and this is what I see more and more I see I, I, I feel like I'm seeing actors more and more in the real world I, I'm not seeing genuine personalities genuine people um, and I don't know whether that's the technology I don't know whether it's the this sort of thing whether it's the filming yourself photographing yourself sharing films and photographs of yourself to other people sharing your stories to ev to everyone what is it you're after doing that who cares what you do so I suppose with making music you can ask the same questions who cares what you do well music I think is to be shared and I always said that I, I produce music I think to a uh, a standard I feel it has worth but it's not for me to say whether it's worthy and therefore if I feel it has worth and I I, I can see I can make a judgment I can look around me and see fantastic music and I can see god awful music that I would barely call music it's um, more of the Muzak and uh, I would say yeah let's have a go at that let's just put this out there some sort of some sort of legacy of of what you've done in your life and it doesn't matter whether it shared with a lot of people or a few people um, it's that this is a to me not a photograph of me on holiday or not a photograph of me trying to look really successful or sexy or whatever it is that I'm supposed to be looking like it's actually um, a work of creative um, art that is trying to communicate something a little bit more from the mundane hopefully um, and it pulls together all my interests my interests in words poetry storytelling and music with a, a, a smattering of, of the visual side through what I do on perhaps a website well, that's very simple 
um, or the, any artwork that's associated, or photography that's associated actually with, with the music, because that, that, that's part of it as well. Um, to me it's not just sharing a photograph or sharing a story of your new car that you just bought last week. It, it's it's um, sharing something a little bit more personal and not being worried or concerned that it's not going to be either understood by everyone or liked by everyone. You still have to do it anyway because it is a, it's, it's an artistic outpouring in some way and I see, I, that's what I don't see. I, I, there was nothing artistic about any of the stuff that I listened to in my 25 minutes of a car journey listening to Radio 1. Just god awful and depressing. Um, why is it that everyone's so full of themselves? We've gone beyond being confident and selling ourselves, copying what America and Americans seem to be so good at, being able to sell yourself with an attitude, um, a positivity, although that's being drained away at the moment. Um, but I think that that we've, in the UK, we seem to have taken it on board and, and moved it into quite an ugly dimension where it's just about me, me, me. It's, it's overtly about selling simply the visual side, be it sexual or be it Well, actually, most of it is the sort of the the, the pseudo attractiveness, the the ugly attractiveness of, of, of people, I suppose. It's with with nothing to say. Um, there's there's nothing clever about any of the comments that are made. Um, you know, Big Brother and all this stuff. It's a business, and it's full of just stupid people saying ridiculous things and being ridiculous, hoping that they might get some TV deal or a book deal out of it. Um, I, I, I would venture actually that it's a form of prostitution. It's a low, it's a sort of a low moral branch and they're picking the lowest fruit from it, whatever fruit that might be. So that's, that's my that's my view. I think that the, that that it's it's up to us individually, no matter what we do, to try and make what we do worthwhile. The worthiness is very much what other people would think. But if you can make what you do something of worth and worthwhile, um, and know that you've done your best, and yes, you might want to be commercially um, successful as well. Nothing wrong with that. But you have to build a solid foundation with a solid idea, a strong idea of, of what you're doing and how you, how you present it. I fall down on the presenting. I'm not interested in marketing myself. So, you know, in a way I shoot myself in the foot. In the foot. <clears throat> I get that. Um, but um, here's, here's where, where it becomes positive. I've started to listen to and watch um, reactions on YouTube. But what they were doing was getting requests. People saying, you should, you should do a reaction to this. You should listen to this. And so they were putting on things like Pink Floyd, Rush, ACDC, Black Sabbath. Um, yes. Uh, something more than the Beatles. Uh, not just English, UK bands uh, from all over the place. Well, main, mainly America. I, I've yet to see any um, real Icelandic or Eastern European bands 
there, but uh, well-known tracks, you know, David Bowie. And what I, I've been fascinated by watching it because so, you can tell some of these, these guys are genuine and some ham it up. They realise they're, they're filming and they need to react in some way. Um, but the, the genuine ones, I've been... It's, it kind of warms the cockles of your heart because they are... They, they talk about a single or... I was watching Muse. It was a, a reaction to Muse. Uh, um, I can't remember the track. It might, might have been Cydonia. But it was uh, live in Ath Athens. Fantastic gig live gig and I mean those guys make a great sound and um, anyway this this guy was reacting to it and you could just see him tingle he could barely sit on the, his seat he was just excited by this music and no wonder and he's saying I can't believe this is this can't be live this can't be live. He couldn't believe what he was listening to and, and, and what he was watching. And you think that is both sad and brilliant because it means that he spent, and I guess the guy's late 20s maybe, mid 20s, he spent his first formative years listening to some closed tripe that society round him said that's what you listen to because you're this sort of person therefore you listen to this sort of music and never got the chance to hear perhaps the radio stations locally only ever played that music perhaps he just had a Spotify list that just liked and gave him stuff that he listened to before. He was never able to break out of it until this point. And all these people are the same. They react to old music, to newer music, to music that's different to the stuff they've grown up with so far. And they have been overwhelmed, some of them close to, to tears, excited. And to be able to listen to music like that for the first time is an absolute gift because you realize the strength, the power of music when it's done well. You realise the diversity that's there, was there in music, that is now no longer there. We'd rather have diverse faces on our screens than have a truly diverse life. It's what, again, we, we get fooled. We're being fooled by what we see on the screens all the time. That has to be the new normality. Is that a great reset? I don't know. We'll find out. But I think that the, 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 these wonderful reactions from, from these people that, that are just um, learning about these, this music. I mean, I, I saw the, 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 the fantastic video of... Um, oh, it's the Nine Inch Nails track, Hurt. Uh, and I've got a few albums from Nine Inch Nails from way back when. Yeah, I liked some of the stuff. Some of it was just um, meh. a little bit, a little bit annoying. But but I get it. I I do get it. Uh, I like some of some of his stuff, the Trent Trent Reznor stuff. Um, but uh, it was Johnny Cash version. Um, he did a um, the, the last you know swan song I guess the last thing that he did with a with a, a very powerful video which really just went back and showed um, went through his his life just sped through his life very quickly um, and the sort of legacy artifacts of what he'd left behind um, and I think he died, I believe he died two days after I think the video was shot. Um, but just all feeling powerful for such a simple song and I've got to say owned the song even though it was a Nine Inch Nails track um, Johnny Cash ended up owning that song he made it his own and it was just yeah 
very emotionally powerful video and when you track the words which are not his words it, it suddenly becomes a Johnny Cash number and the the reaction from people that have um, watched this uh, a very unusual very different style of music something they would be confronted with normally has been amazing to see it's just fantastic to watch and and I can't believe it when these guys say I don't even know who Johnny Cash is or they say um, oh, what was the other one I've never um, they've never heard of some of these people you know some of them barely have barely heard of David Bowie and I think the, the Johnny Cash moment with that track even though he didn't write it was very much a sort of bookend to Johnny Cash's life and that made it even more relevant um, and, and these people were picking up on this um, and it's very much like um, uh, I, I felt and a lot of people felt with um, uh, the Black Star album, the, the, um, the, the last David Bowie album I mean that, that is a true artist who uses his death and puts the dying element into that album the last thing that he produces with a few surprises on the way um, and does it so skillfully with so much artistic flair um, with the band that he decided to use this time round I think they were, they were a, um, a jazz band a fantastic players really unusual sometimes not easy to listen to but typical um, Bowie Bowie typical of him and um, that as a legacy piece there's worthiness that that's apps that's worth so much to the music industry just not to radio just not to the the sort of thin layer of dusty frosting that is the real deep earth the deeper stuff the more meaningful stuff underneath that um, and you know those deeper seams of music they're being covered more and more quickly by by this awful dusty frosting of nothingness music um, and I know that a lot of younger people are searching for something more in their music and I think they have to invent it I think they can't just go on being high, a hybrid of something a bit of something here and a bit of something there that was something very fashionable um, uh, in the 80s and 90s where there was a sort of collision you know Asian music came in and, the, and, the, and then we have oh what would that sound like if we if we put it in with a folk song or with, with a, a, a blues beat um, and then uh, African music oh well it's it's that did its thing and um, Peter someone like Peter Gabriel was always interested in that with the whole WOMAD uh, in the early early years he was sort of um, always interested in that I, I I I felt that got a little bit tired um, I think unless you really do feel it um, there were a lot of people pretending to be into uh, some of the African stuff because it was it was current it was the current trend and there are other people that absolutely um, uh, would just just loved some of the, the guitar work. I mean, I, I, I particularly love the guitar work on on some of the sort of East African stuff. Um, just just lovely sort of lyrical rhythms that wind in and out of the piece of music. Beautiful. Um, a lot of it didn't touch me at all. You know, culturally it was too far from, from what I wanted to listen to, what I was interested in. That's fine. We were allowed to do that. But to, but to actually be... Um, to be uh, introduced to it is the important thing and I think that younger people need to be introduced to different types of music and like these reaction YouTube videos I'm finding a lot of people now a lot of younger people now are um, searching for older music anyway and quite rightly we'll, we'll call that it
I've just bumbled and uh, worthiness let's try and make what we do of worth catch you later